Greetings programs, welcome to The Grid. I am Sark, and today's game is Blended Materials in 3D Studio Max. Looking at our reference image, we can see that there's some flower or paint or some series of stains on this uh, wood surface. Uh, we're not going to be doing more than, than one layer today. Uh, you could, if you wanted, take these techniques and, and use as many layers as you wanted. But in any case, I'd like to maybe give it the look of some uh, paint that's been mostly chipped off. So that's what we're going to try to do today. I'm going to open our material editor, select the wood grain material that we already made, go to the physical material and switch it to a blend material. The 3ds Max should give you an option, discard the old material or keep the old material. We're going to keep the old material and that goes into material map 1. We should probably give it a name since everything just became 09 default. So our blended material, we're just going to call it blended material. Under here, we're going to name this wood grain. Uh, you know it's your wood grain because it's got these maps that we put last time. Right? So that's how you tell the difference if you're having trouble. Uh, but it should be in the first material slot. In the second material slot, we now have a new material, uh, just an empty standard material. So I'm going to switch that over to physical. And we're going to try and create uh, a paint. Now, I'm going to maybe go a little overkill on the paint. Uh, I think I'm going to make it almost look like a car paint. Uh, but that's because we're blending it. So uh, the wood's parameters will take some off it. So, I think I want to go to advanced mode because I need more physics stuff. Uh, we, we definitely want to have uh, some reflections in it, very subtle reflections, right? So, uh, first for the clear coat, yeah, I think it ought to have a clear coat, uh, maybe like 0.5, nothing too crazy, just a touch of roughness, leave the index of refraction right where it is, that looks pretty accurate. Um, effect underlying, maybe just a bit, maybe like 0.1, and I don't think I want to bring any roughness with that. So just, yeah, that'll do. Um, base parameters, one is good. I'm going to choose a color that we're going to be able to tell apart from the wood. Um, I thought about like doing something really, really subtle with like a, a beige paint that's almost white. But I think there's enough, um, our wood grain gets desaturated enough as is, so I actually want to make something like a periwinkle. Pretty light. Uh, gets desaturated a little bit, but yeah, okay. I probably, yeah, probably need to bring that saturation up just a touch. So, there's our, our base color for our paint. Uh, let's have some reflections. Oh, roughness. Uh, should the paint be rough at all? Yeah. Actually, it should be pretty rough. Uh, it should be like 0.8. Because it, it doesn't want to be like hyper smooth. The reflections, on the other hand, need to be like 0.1. Um, maybe just a touch of metalness. Like 0.3. And an index of refraction should be, what, on the reflections? Like 1.2. Nothing too crazy there. So let's see how that looks. Uh, I'm going to press this button, Show Shaded Material in Viewport. Wait. What do I want to do? Oh, we're going to go back up to our blended material, and I'm going to set the mix amount to 1. So, or 100. 100. Uh, so now we're just going to look at our, our paint, and we'll worry about mixing them in a minute. So looking at our paint, I am going to turn on this uh, shaded background. And that's let, that lets me see just like how crazy reflective it is. I think that might be a bit much. 
Let's try it though. Let's try it in our viewport. So uh, we'll take a render of it. Yeah, we have it sort of reflecting the objects on the table very subtly. It's very, very bright. It looks like a coat of car paint, just about. Um, so maybe I overdid the metalness. I could take it down to like 0.1. See if we still get some of these subtle reflections. Yeah, actually. So it might be too subtle. might be like 0.15 is where I want to be. But it's good to know that I can bracket the target. So actually, I like 0.1. Um, yeah, just have subtle, subtle reflections in our paint. Uh, no longer looks like car paint. does look like a very fresh coat of paint. So we'll go with that. Now we need to make it very unfresh. So back up to our blending material, we can choose how much to blend it, right? But of course a straight percentage is no bueno, because you're just going to end up with, with the whole thing evenly faded. Um, take a quick render of that just for amusement's sake. 50-50. Yeah, not what we want at all. So we're going to have to put a map for our mask. Now in in earlier versions of 3D Studio Max, or if I weren't using the Art Render, or maybe if I was using the Arnold Blender or something, I would consider using a uh, procedural material, maybe smoke, or uh, we could use a specular map, perhaps, or not a specular map, a cellular map. But we don't really have those options for the Art Renderer, uh, and that's okay. CG Textures will come to the rescue. So I'm gonna, I went out to CG Textures, so I'm going to choose Bitmap. I'm going to navigate to the file I downloaded. Um, these are not hard to find. So I, I found this, this stucco. I'm going to open it here for a minute. Here. Okay. Found this stucco image. Uh, I like it because it's high contrast, so I don't have to take it into Photoshop or Affinity Photo and do some work on it. It's pretty much good to go. Uh, we can play with the curves a little bit in 3D Studio Max. And... What else? I like that uh, the pattern is irregular and pretty organic looking. And I think that'll be a good distribution for our paint across the wood surface. So we're going to use this plaster texture for our mix map. We can see it's already mixing pretty well. I guess we could rotate it. Like, I wonder if I rotated 90 degrees. Do I like this better? I guess I don't know until I look at it on the table. Actually, let's do that. Let's do this. Is it interactive, I guess? Sort of? Hmm. Don't quite believe it. All right, let's take 90 off. Okay, yeah, absolutely, it's working. Uh, 90. Okay, so I could have it more down that end. Or I could have it where it is. I could try 90 on this. Definitely not working. So really, the, the, the z-axis, or the w-axis in this case, because u, v, and w are relative to the object, as opposed to x, y, and z, which are relative to the grid in your world. Um, that could be worth playing with. 45. 45 is kind of interesting. Doesn't make a lot of sense, though. So what is it? Zero. You know, the way it is is actually pretty good. I don't hate that. I just feel like there should be more clinging to the end. Uh, let me say 75. And now that now I feel like there's too much. So that's my
that's my issue, honestly. I'm just going to leave it at zero for now. You're going to see the effect, and, and then we can we can decide. I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it at 90. We'll look at that. We'll see how how we feel about it. I think it's just going to be too much on the end, but I'm willing to try it. So uh, there's nothing now for it at the moment except to give it a render. So the white parts should be painted, the other parts should be less painted. Feels pretty good. Feels a little slick here. All right. It's not bad, actually. So I kind of like this. I, I do feel like, like we lost a lot of the saturation out of our wood, just with that clear coat and some other things. So I'm going to see if we can take our material pause that render and change this uh, change the strength so looking at our at our plaster uh, and scrolling down we have an output value so I'm going to choose to enable the color map and we're going to play with some curves here I'm going to put a point I'm going to move this point down I'm going to right click on it and choose Bezier. And do something like this. And I might even do I might even do for the top. So let's add another point. And let's make this more of a I don't know what you call this. S curve. There's probably some fancy math word for it. Um, yeah. Something like that. Probably make this bit smaller. Pull it over a little more. Okay. Let's see how our, our material behaves now. I think that we'll have... I think that we'll have our wood coming back to life a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Just tweaking the curves there, you get um, you get a lot of control. Uh, it would be the same as if you took the map into Photoshop and played with its brightness and contrast, basically. Um, or played with the curves in there. The value curves. So, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, that's how you blend two radically different materials, um, and uh, there's all kinds of different ways you could blend them on a gradient. You could you could go into Photoshop and, and draw how the way you want them blended. Uh, you could export your UV maps and get really precise. Uh, this for me today uh, definitely working. Feels like uh, the material now has some layers of time um, built into it. So giving the impression I desire. Alright folks, good luck, have fun.